This is Monte Carlo International, 205 meters on your medium wave band. And now to Sweet Art the Radio, ladies and gentlemen, Kenny Everett. Now! No, no, no. It's time for the Beatle Interview on Radio Monte Carlo International. Yes, friends, this is the moment where I, Curly Ken, go into John's delicious 72 acre house deep in the heart of Ascot. Lovely place it is. And not only a beautiful house, but a beautiful studio as well. He's built for himself right in the heart of his home. A real 16-track recording studio that he's doing all his new stuff on. He's still doing super stuff. It's not as jolly as his last lot, but that was with the rest of the group, you see, as you'll soon find out. Still, to show the contrast between yesterday and today, here's a few of his old things that he wrote himself. That's our Vera Lynn there, John Lennon, with two of his own compositions from the Sgt. Pepper album. But now, over to Ascot. Well, listeners, here we are in John's luxurious 72-acre studio here built into his home in Ascot. We are, seeing as this isn't television. Yes, we're in a studio, five by eight. Now, why did you buy a studio in your own house when you've got one in your office as well? In fact, how many have you got? Well, the one in the office hasn't been finished. Ah. And that's going to be 16-track, and this is 8-track. Mm. And it just means you can code when you want. And you can go to bed. If ever you feel uh, during this interview like coming out with an original song recorded just for Radio Monte Carlo, please feel free. The man who broke the bang in Monte Carlo. We'll have to say, oh my God. <laughs> well, tell us about your LP, John. Seems not to be as jolly as your last ones. <coughs> as jolly as what? Well, all the rest of them. Well, such as <laughs> <laughs> Revolver Sergeant Pepper. Oh, ah, well, that was the group effort, you see. Mm. Well, do you reckon you're the, the sad member of the group? Well, uh, I wouldn't say that they're all particularly much happier than me, but uh, they might emphasize the happier side, that's all. Are you, are you thinking of doing a jolly album? If I feel jolly, you see. I mean, I was... I was sort of going into the things that I wrote about on the album, so... Mm -hmm. They weren't particularly jolly, they were just sort of more just like life, you know, life isn't jolly, it's a bit of both. The album is a bit of both, you know. Seems to be mostly centred around your childhood. Well, yes, it is. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> that's true, Kenny, very good. But the thing... Oh, he susses his facts, this interviewer. He's now disrobing his suede gauntlet. Well, every time a movie goes... So, I'm taking it off. Anyway... But it's not unusual for me to write about childhood because there were a few old tracks of the Beatles I did about childhood. Like? Well, the middle eight to She Said, She Said, when, when I was a boy, everything was right, all that bit. And uh, Help, when oh, I was younger, so much younger than today. So, so it's not surprising. And uh, sad songs I wrote then, you know, I'm a loser and uh, I can't think of half of them, but it's not extraordinary, you know. Track by track, let's go yeah. through the LP. What's the first track? Mm -hmm. Bubba. about it. Is that about your mother? Yeah, but it's, it's, uh, it's really about most people's mothers, I reckon, you know. But they can't be all as bad as that. No, but, uh, I think, um, it, you, you no need to take it literally, the mother I had, you never had me, meaning my mother left me or my mother died. The fact that lots of people say, yes, I've had their mother all their life and had them with them, but they didn't have you know, literally enough love from them, you know. Well, lots of us suffer that, because, I mean, parents have got their own hang-ups and see. But it's good to, it's good to have parents that aren't too much, because then they kick you out of the nest and you've got forage. Yeah, I know, but, I mean, it's just that maybe the last generation, you know, they would spot or whoever, Dr. Spock, or somebody would say, oh, don't feed them by the breast, you know, it's not on, you know, it gets fashionable to not touch the child, you know, which I don't think is very good for them. No, I so things like that, you know. Yeah. So didn't have enough of mummy. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> but you, you should be the happiest man in the, of the century. Why? I mean, you've been to all that hell and damnation of being a, a dragged up by the heels to the heights of stardom. And now you've sort of secured yourself in your own little studio, in your own huge house, in 70 acres of delightful scenery. So let's yeah. have a jolly LP, John. Thank you. Something like that, Yeah, that'll do. Ah, yes. Well, um, on the next track, we will write on fold. Uh, was, um, um, hold on, uh, John. Well, what was that all about? It was about... Like that, you see. <laughs> well, there must be something spectacular happening to you. Uh, well, I am being uh, sued. Well, that's pretty spectacular. Oh. But we're not allowed to talk about that. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hold on, John. So that's uh, that was just about holding on, you see. Mm. Even though it's not all that hot, let's hold on. Which is your favourite track? I don't really know, you see. I like working class here, but I like ice as a song, you know, as a, as, as a poem or whatever it is. Mm. I, I like isolation just to listen to. Yeah, that's it's pretty. And uh, I quite like remember maybe parts of Guardian. I never have just one I like, you know. Love seems to stand out like uh, it was written ages ago on that album. It's it, it wasn't it was written at the same time. You think? So that was. I mean, that's a pretty. Uh, it's not a miserable song at all, is it? No, it's lovely. Right. Now, what about this latest record of yours? I mean, you can't really mean power to the people like my mum and dad. Yeah. But my dad wouldn't know what to do with it. No, but it's like saying, you know, imagine there wasn't any government and somebody says, we'll vote the uh, government in, and you're saying, you don't expect my mum and dad to vote, do you? But that's the ones they've got in anyway. I mean, they've done at it for hundreds of years now. They must have it right by now. Do you think they got it right? Well, as right as you can get it on Earth. Well, that's the only chance you get. On well, if you don't get it right on Earth, where are you expecting him to get it right? Yeah, but you've got to have bad bits to make the good bits stand well, out. Well, that's, that's sure. I mean, that, you get that with your, you know, the respect of a government. You get that just as a person. Everybody has ups and downs, like. Mm. But I just think people should have more say in what goes on. Can you see a better world emerging? Because it doesn't seem to have got any better or worse since it started. I can't see it, but uh, there's no harm in striving for it. Eh? So you're blindly striving for a better world? Well, I wouldn't say blindly striving. Not blindly. <laughs> that was Not Blindly by John Leonard. Do you come in here of all times of night? Like, if you feel an inspiration coming on, do you pop into the studio and do it? No, I prefer to stay in bed. <laughs> no, the, the point is that uh, still at the moment I need engineers, so I have to book you know, to get people down. But uh, at one stage, it should be possible to, for the engineers to set it one night and then we just press a button, it all does it automatic. Then I could pop down in the night. Mm. Mm. Do you think you, you uh, work better with um, a lot of no people around? A lot of no people? Mm. Uh, you know, in EMI, Whenever you record there, there's a million people staring. Well, not always, but uh, less people are better. Mm. So if you came down here on your own, you'd write some orgasmic material. Well, I wouldn't probably write it, you know. I mean, I write just anywhere. Mm. Give us a startling fact. I'm 30. Oh, yeah? That's startling, isn't it? I'm only 26. Can you remember when you were 26? What was happening? by wearing one of those, you got rid of all your sins. A hair shirt? Yeah. Well, all the saints did it, didn't they? And then the next track was, I found out. <laughs> <laughs> do you think you'd ever become a complete and a hermit? No, I couldn't do that, you know. What would you miss? People. Are you still like people? Oh, I like them very much. <laughs> do you think you're less popular nowadays? Uh, than when I was a Beatle? Yes. I might be. Does it matter to you? Well, 
Pe- uh, you know, it's not nice to be disliked. Uh, but I mean, but I mean not thought about. Uh, not thought about. Well, that would be dreadful, wouldn't it? I'm asking you. Well, you know it. I mean, who was the one that picked up the <laughs> musical papers, ladies and gentlemen? He said, it's not worth reading about when I'm not in. Uh, and you agreed, you rat. I agreed, you rat, so that answers your question. <laughs> It's fun to be talked about in a way. Yeah. Is most of what you read about yourself true? If it's a personal interview with me, it'd be, you know, pretty well true. Mm. You know, typing errors can change the meaning of things, but it's pretty well true. It's, it's written about me. Well, it's usually just, <laughs> just rubbish, you know. Why don't you write a book about yourself? No, I'd sooner just make records and that, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm off that old. But I'm doing it when I'm old, you know. <coughs> How can you see your life developing in I front just, of you? I can't. If I mean, <laughs> you'd asked me two years ago, I wouldn't. I mean, I couldn't have imagined what was going to happen. So I wouldn't even attempt to guess. Isolation. That would have been a single, I think, you know. Well, I think George said that, or he liked it best. You seem to have a load of people around that you that are collecting, like when we were having a cup of tea. Yeah. Yeah. There were two people listening to the radio to see if they were playing your own. Oh, no, that's Val. Look out the radio and worry whether, whether or not we've got stuff out or not. So you don't listen to when you're on the radio? Oh, I do. Yeah, I mean, but I have a, a radio somewhere else, you know, but that music you heard, Val listens to that day and night. Val's the, the housekeeper. It's a pretty big house, this, isn't it? It's not as big as it seems when you first get here, you know. When you first walk in, you think, Jesus, you know. <laughs> but it's like a large version of a small house, meaning that there's not that many more rooms except for this office section. Yeah. In the living section, it's just like big rooms instead of small. Who did it belong to before you? I don't know. Uh, I think some of the Cadbury or other had it. Mm. But a few people have had it. You're still friendly with the rest of them? Well, uh, yeah. I played billiards with Ringo and discuss records with George. Oh. I mean, we're, of course, we're seeing more of each other now with the God case going on. So, in a way, that that God case brought Ringo, George, and I closely together again. You know, oh. We had to sort of spend hours on different things. And so we're pretty damn friendly now. Good. Because I'm sure there's a million people out there that would mm-hmm. love to see you all jangling away together again. Well, uh, it's, it's like 90% that George Ringo and I would record together again. Maybe not as Beatles, you know, under that title. But, uh, <clears throat> like if I wanted the guitarist to play with me, you know, I would ask him. Mm. Same as I asked Ringo to play drums. You know. Is there any one of the old artists that you would like to play with? I'm too sort of shy in a way to play with people I admire, you know, like B.B. King or anybody. I might do it if I, was, if I was there, but I don't do much going around to other people's sessions. What do you think of all the violence that's flaring up all over the place? Well, I mean, London's violent compared with Dublin or something, so it's all... Not at the moment. moment. <laughs> oh, silly thing to say. Tell me, John, why are you still plugging this album? Because it's been out for an awful long time now, hasn't it? Because uh, in the early days of it, uh, they wouldn't play on BBC or anything. You know. <clears throat> why not? I don't know. Probably they thought every line and every lyric must have had something in it, you know. But so I didn't get many plugs. That's because I wasn't there. Right. They shifted all the odd balls off, <laughs> haven't they? So that's a, a reason to, to keep playing it. When the shows are segmented into one-hour slots, most of the DJs want to just play the jolly, bouncy, popular stuff. Yeah, but I mean, it was literally not played, you know, as, as a policy at one time. And that didn't do it any good. That was when it was first out. <clears throat> and the people do have to hear something before they... What do you think the answer is? Radio as it is at the stage? <clears throat> yeah, it would be great. Lots of stations around. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, bring back the pirates, for God's sake. Oh, it's too lonely out there. Is it? Twelve people playing records at each other for two weeks on end. But it was good for the listeners, anyway. Yes. You're yeah. surrounded by an entourage, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> two votes for yes. Well, it depends what you mean. Actually, I have four people that work for Yoko and I, we have, which is one a driver, one a housekeeper, an assistant, a secretary and another guy that comes 
<laughs> from Raffles. <laughs> so I suppose that's an entourage. I was on the way. So they have a lot of business going uh, on. Isn't it? Yes, you seem to be rushing ahead with things, don't you? Well, it's a hive of industry, this place. But I like I like working, you know. Mm. So I mean, that's about all there is to do, really, unless you just lie in your head all the time. You're very fortunate, really, uh, in a way, that you can now do exactly what you want, can't you? Almost. I mean, but that's what I was working for. Well, you had this studio in mind from the start. No, no, but to do... I mean, the only reason to try and sort of get money or financial security or whatever it is is so you can do what you want. You know? Yeah. But well, we're pretty tied up, you know, in a way. How? Well, with contracts and things like that. Don't say why not to this question. You're wearing a badge, a Mao Tse Tung badge. Oh, why? Because uh, I, I don't like the look of it. Well, aren't you frightened that when you appear in the newspaper with that badge, everyone will rush out and start reading him and thinking he's a groove? Well, uh, they won't do that. I mean, you're still under misapprehension that just because I do something, everybody will. I mean, we've agreed I'm less popular. So people don't do what I do. I mean, I've also worn American flags or any... I like bits of badges, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a, a nice one. It is nice, isn't it? Yeah. It's sort of reddish and with his head in the middle. What's the next track? Uh, mm, love. Oh, yes, that's true. With the fading intro we did so low you can't hear it on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> that's this one. Mm. That was pretty happy, wasn't it? Yes, that was nice. No, it wasn't. It was sad. Well, I mean, it wasn't miserable. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, uh, when Paul does a single, do you rush out and buy it and then think, right, I'll get it. Right, he's on Apple. <laughs> 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 do you listen to it? <clears throat> the rat, I'll get it with my next single. <laughs> oh, I don't. I just listen to it, you know. And what do you think of the sort of stuff he's doing lately? He's done better since what? No, no, he, he's done better stuff than the stuff he's doing now, you know. Mm -hmm. Might be because of the situation, I think. If you had Sergeant Pepper in one hand mm -hmm. and your LP in the other, which yeah. would you listen to first and more eagerly? Well, obviously, the one I made. But you were chiefly responsible for Sergeant Pepper, weren't you? No, no more than others. So you'd rather have something you've done by yourself than... A yeah, I mean, when we were at the Beatles, you know, I mean, we'd yeah. always prefer our own tracks unless there was something specific, you know. So you never completely wrote together? Not well, yes, but I mean, each individual Beatle would prefer different tracks. Have you ever heard something that he's done that you thought, wow, I must do something like that? Well, I don't know about I must do something like that, but I've enjoyed stuff Paul's done. Mm. Obviously, I mean, we all had respect and enjoyed each other's music. Do you think you'll ever have tea with him again? Sure. So when the forces die down, you'll rush at each other? I don't know about that, dear. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, there's no doubt we'll see each other. Yeah. So will the world reverberate I mean, to another Lennon McCartney composition? I doubt it, because we weren't writing all that much together for the last couple of years anyway. Have you ever considered suicide? Well, uh, well yes. As a teenager, even. I mean, I think everybody sort of thinks about it. You know, I don't remember standing on the edge of a cliff <laughs> and making, you know, being that near. But I've considered it. Most of us have been through that. Most of us most have been through something with mothers and fathers. Most of us have been through something religion, with religion or not with religion, but, you know, what, whatever. Most of us have been isolated or been in love. Most of us remember things, so that's, you know, mm. just casual remembrance. And most of us have wondered about what love is, you know? What is it? Love is love. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of things that, that you sort of, your mind blocks off memories from the childhood, you know, because when you're a child you can only take so much pain or whatever it is. So when something happens you tend to block it off and not feel it, you know, and uh, it, it almost, in a way, literally blocks off part of your body. But that's the bit it doesn't want to know about. <clears throat> yeah, but it's, it's like... Uh, not wanting to know about going to the toilet or having a bath. But it, if you don't do it for a long time, it accumulates. And uh, emotions are the same, you know, and you ac accumulate them over the years. And they come out in other forms, you know. Not like violence theory. or something. Well, violence or, you know, uh, boldness or short-sightedness, something like that. That's part of his theory, you know. It's pretty uh, revolutionary, I think, the idea. But it's, from the experience I had there, it seemed 
pretty valid and there's a good basis for that theory and so what you what you do is uh, <clears throat> is go back or find a way of going back to those emotions that you blocked off and you remember things you didn't remember and experience that emotion because it's, it's still there it's like taking a, <clears throat> a diarrhea pill or something and it all comes out baby are you afraid of death no i'm not afraid of it no. i don't want to die dying nicely would be all right you know like <laughs> quietly um it's no bother at all in your own studio <laughs> 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 taping it and filming it for the same time something like that right uh what's the next one there must be one left uh, uh <clears throat> well 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 right here it comes do you like yoko's singing i'm pretty influenced by her singing you know because uh, if you hear cold turkey at the end of it ladies and gentlemen the rpa 6 kind of out now if you hear cold turkey at the end of it i'm getting towards singing or letting the, the voice go as much as yoko does but not quite but it's on well, 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 I let it go. So what, is it, what is it? You're just shouting the way you feel? Is that what it is? I don't get it. Almost. I mean, it, it's the same as shouting twist and shout or tutti frutti, <laughs> only just missing the words, you know, just don't say anything. I mean, I mean, because tutti frutti wop wop aluma never said anything uh, in, in literary terms. And Yoko did the same, you know, she, she just takes a word or, or an expression or an idea and just work around it's like a sax playing it you know? like an instrumental anyway i was telling you oh yes so <coughs> yoko's doing with her voice what instrumentalists have done over the past 50 years with their instruments but she's doing it with a voice why here's yoko herself who would do some explaining of the problem i think we're saying a lot of things in our minds that too heavy to come out as clean sentences you know? mm -hmm. like i always feel like i'm stuttering my mind before I say something. But, you know, because of uh, our sort of cultured and refined background or something, we do manage to say something in a very smooth sentence, like, how are you, Kenny, or something, you know. But maybe in my mind, it's like, ha, 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 you, you know. People listening to your side will never think, oh, she's trying to say so-and-so. They'll just hear the sound of it. Well, but what you're trying to say in your mind is not that specific. It's more like emotional and it's a rap track, you know. But people are clamoring to think, what is, what is she saying? What does she mean? Well, it's the same thing about when they brought in abstract art and that. And it's probably showing that you go in any sort of middle class directing home or whatever. And they have their abstract stuff, oh, yeah. the same. Cafes, yeah. Even, you know, like... Restaurants. Yeah, this stuff is all world, probably. Yeah. Well, so, the, I mean, it's... It used to be all that... I, I don't know what I like, but I don't like that, you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's just abstract. It's, it's like, like anyway, another point is that instead of when you're drowning, which uh, we all are half the time, you don't say, hey, will you consider possibly helping me to a degree that would save my life? <laughs> <laughs> So that's what she's doing. Basically a sad chap, John, I thought. Well, we're out of the studio now. Lovely house they've got. Beautiful grounds, 72 acres. And they're very happy together. And that's the latest bulletin. Very courteous couple. She was knitting in the control room while we were doing that interview. And he was strumbling away on his guitar. And on that little note, for keys with lots of good stuff coming from out at his studio, I think, in the next couple of months. It's goodbye from Radio Monte Carlo, and from me, and from Tommy, and from Dave. And we'll all be back very soon, when all this problem's sorted out, and Radio Monte Carlo will burst forth again on us from some other direction. What do you say, John? <laughs> well, friends, we'll be back again soon, so keep your radios tuned. Kenny, very much indeed, and what a pleasure. Thank you very much indeed. Kenny Everett, along with John Lennon, Paul McCartney, Edward Heath, Harold Wilson, and, of course, Patrick Griffin. Guest stars, oh, guest stars galore here on Radio Monte Carlo International.